You know what I think is amazing? While we've got the DNC going on right now that is absolutely just rabid gun control without any kind of semblance of critical thinking skills or anything, it's just pandering to the lowest common denominator, uh, we have movement in the exact opposite direction in two different locations for national reciprocity. And I think that if you talk to most people when it comes to uh, having, you know, at least two neurons that can fire in concert, uh, the concept of self-defense is ingrained in American culture. It's a God-given inalienable right that's enshrined in our Constitution and enumerated in the Bill of Rights. And most people will be like, all right, well, this fictitious line on a map somewhere doesn't end a God-given inalienable right. So the movement for reciprocity has been an ongoing fight. So I'll put it like this. Uh, uh, can, it's, it's sort of started with concealed carry. In the state of Ohio, for instance, we had a terrible concealed carry law. And uh, we accepted an imperfect concealed carry law to get it on the books. And then we've been amending it ever since. And now it's what I would consider a top notch, like uh, probably maybe not the best, but almost the best in the country. And that's how you move things like this along. Well, reciprocity is kind of the same thing where uh, just because I live in the state of Ohio, if I want to go to uh, another locale, why does my inherent right to defend my life and the lives of those that I love end? Well, that's what we're talking about here today on the VSO Gun Channel. Today's video is brought to you by Sling Steady. Sling Steady is a system that was designed to create a more stable, easy to use, reliable squeeze bag than anything else on the market. It is a lightweight squeeze bag that attaches directly to your sling for recreational shooters, hunting, and long range shots. With this, you're able to study your rifle quicker and more effectively than ever before, and it attaches in just a couple seconds. This is an American-made product. You can find all that information over on our affiliates page. Special thanks to Sling Steady for making today's video possible. So we have two fights going on that deal with reciprocity right now. The first one is out of the state of California. California's got a huge border. It borders multiple states, and several of those states are not like California. <laughs> and... There is no mechanism currently for uh, out-of-state residents to achieve reciprocity in the state of California. Now, reciprocity can be sort of weird because sometimes it's the state that people are trying to go to that is the problem that uh, bars reciprocity. And sometimes it's the other way around where there's not an agreement because the state that people want to go to is to communist and they don't want to grant the reciprocity between the two states because uh, the one state is being an ass clown basically is, is kind of how that whole thing shakes out. That was the, that was the thing for a long period of time uh, dealing uh, people would go get a Florida permit because Florida would recognize a whole bunch of, uh, of permits or, or excuse me, a bunch of states would recognize Florida's permit, but like, for instance, for a long period of time, people wouldn't recognize Ohio's permit because our state were being douchebags, basically. And now we've got everything together, and now we've got a lot better reciprocity today than we did then. So right now, uh, there's a lawsuit going on uh, for citizens uh, that are suing the state of California, saying, hey, we travel for friends, and family and work into California and we should not be disarmed. The uh, Bruin decision says that text history and tradition in the United States says uh, that what you're doing is unconstitutional. Our God given inalienable right to self-defense does not stop at your border and you guys have to stop doing this thing. That's the basis of that lawsuit. That is an FPC lawsuit, which FPC has to absolutely love the state of California. It's got to be an absolute smorgasbord out there for organizations like FPC and SAF and, and FRAC and all those. Uh, whenever they uh, 
run out of work, they can just turn slightly to the side and be like, all right, what kind of stupid crap is going over there by those uh, people that hate America out in California? Oh, that one right there. To shift gears, though, there's a new case out of that. Well, it's not a new case. It's come up on my radar, excuse me, uh, out of the state of Massachusetts. And this is currently at the Supreme Judicial Court. Did I get that right? Hang on. That's the court. It's the highest court in the uh, state of Massachusetts. And uh, this one is a little bit different because it is dealing with citizens that have uh, run into trouble who have gotten jammed up citizens of the state of New Hampshire that were jammed up by the state of Massachusetts and the justice department of the state of New Hampshire has just filed a brief in that case. So in translation from legal speak to regular people, English, the state of New Hampshire is going to bat for its citizens against the state of Massachusetts. And this is really good. Let's take a look at it. Attorney General Formella announced that New Hampshire is filing an amicus brief with the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court. This brief supports a Massachusetts District Court ruling that found that Massachusetts's uh, firearm regulations are unconstitutional as applied to non-residents temporarily traveling to the state. The cases involve two New Hampshire residents who were each charged with carrying firearms without a license in Massachusetts. This brief is crucial because it stands up for the fundamental rights guaranteed by the Second Amendment, not just for New Hampshire residents, but for all law-abiding citizens traveling across state lines. By challenging Massachusetts's strict firearms laws, we are affirming that constitutional freedoms should not be undermined by inconsistent and overly burdensome regulations. This is all about ensuring that responsible gun owners can protect themselves without fear of unjust legal consequences when they cross state borders. Upholding these rights is essential to safeguarding personal safety and reinforcing the principle that the Constitution must be respected and upheld nationwide. Key points. Constitutional protection. The brief argues that the Second Amendment protects the right to carry firearms for self-defense beyond one's home. Massachusetts law makes it a felony for non-residents to carry firearms that they would be lawfully allowed to carry in their home state, and this infringes upon that right. The brief notes that there is no historical precedent for such restrictive measures against non-residents. In fact, historical precedent supports such clear passage while carrying. The current Massachusetts law fails to meet historical standards required to justify significant burdens on Second Amendment rights. Impact on rights. The brief warns of dangers of criminalizing lawful behavior across state lines, potentially leading to severe and unjust legal consequences for citizens exercising Second Amendment rights while traveling. New Hampshire's involvement reflects its commitment to protecting the rights of its residents and ensuring state laws do not unduly infringe upon constitutional freedoms. The Granite State's amicus brief highlights the broader implications of the court's ruling, advocating for the protection of individual liberties and the necessity of ensuring that responsible gun owners can travel without fear of becoming a felon the moment that they travel over the Massachusetts border. Now, the only problem that I have with this is the use of the term law-abiding citizen. I really hate the term law-abiding citizen. We should seek to replace law-abiding citizen with peaceable citizen because uh, law-abiding means that you're just going to go along with whatever your government tells you that you have to do versus a peaceable citizen is one that generally obeys the law as long as the law is just. That is the standard at which we should strive for, and that is the standard that I wish that uh, these uh, people in power would use. But semantics at this point in time, that's a discussion for a more hardcore topic at a later date. Uh, this is fantastic because this is exactly states out there Attorney generals out there, or excuse me, attorneys general out there, take note, this is the type of behavior we expect from our elected officials. This is precisely the thing that we want to see you do. That said, you'll notice that the Bruin decision, if you've been paying attention to uh, 
that movement is implicated in multiple locations across this. I'll have the entire brief there uh, linked for you guys if you want to go run that down and read it for yourself. Uh, But whenever something like this makes it to the Supreme Court, it creates my phone, not yours. Sorry about that. Really important phone call. I look at the Bruin decision like a giant sledgehammer. And whenever you see something like that finalized at the Supreme Court, it is a sledgehammer falling onto a piece of glass. And you'll see the the immediate impact will punch a hole in the glass. And then all around it, you'll see these fractal shattering patterns where parts of the pane of glass that are way dislocated from the actual epicenter of the impact are affected. This is one of those incidents where uh, downstream a couple years later, these provisions of that decision are being used to challenge that. And then as these individual cases are decided and they work themselves up through the courts, they will set their own precedents because you know that shitbirds like Massachusetts aren't going to let this go. They're going to keep fighting this. And then as that gets pushed to the Supreme Court and precedent is set there, we move the Second Amendment movement forward, fully solidifying what it actually means to have a Second Amendment right. So I think that these small cases they're small now, uh, but I think they have the potential to be major heavy hitters in the future when we're talking about what it should actually be to have a God-given inalienable right that is enshrined in our Constitution and enumerated in the Bill of Rights. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Is this the right path, and did I land this plane? Thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully, we'll see another video here at the VSO Gun Channel.